very good morning to all of you thank you so the theme for this tedx is ashwata the inverted tree of life and the theme that i have taken is embracing holistic wisdom from ashwata the inverted tree of life in modern education let me go ahead with the presentation here the inverted inverted tree of life is a powerful symbol representing the illusory nature of our world in this metaphor the gunas remain unseen while actions that is the branches appear dominant right with this metaphor it highlights the illusory nature of world where superficial aspects are the ones which actually take precedence over meaningful elements so i am going to relate this metaphor to modern education let me go ahead and start with how does learning happen so if you look at how does learning happen there are several theories of learning which says how learning happen but if you look at the dharma sutras it says acharya padama datte padam shishya samedaya padam sa brahmacharyebhya padam kala kramena cha it splits learning into four quadrants and it says that acharya padama datte one fourth learning happens from the teacher who is going to teach you so if the teacher is not good can't help it one fourth learning will not happen but today we have teachers available at the click of a button you can get the teacher of your choice at the click of a button and learn so that's not a problem you will still be able to learn even if your teacher is not good in the class you can find a good teacher online and also start learning the next one fourth is padam shishya samedaya one fourth learning happens by your own self efforts so if you don't put efforts if you don't seek knowledge and learn the learning will not happen because it's one fourth through self efforts then padam sa brahmacharyebhya one fourth is through peer learning the peers with whom you are will give you that one fourth learning if your peers are not really great then that one fourth learning suffers the last one is padam kala kramena cha the one fourth only life will teach you even if you get the best teachers best of your peers best of your efforts learning doesn't get completed there and one fourth is life long learn the life will keep teaching you again and again several lessons which you have to accept and learn and move on and learning happens forever so this is the base with which i start and i'm going to relate this to the secondary education and higher education in this country so does learning really happen in the higher education space and the uh, secondary education in this fashion let us explore that now let me start off with the growth of dummy schools in this country some of you might have heard this word called dummy school dummy school was a new term for me about a year back i didn't know about this that there was something called a dummy school i was wondering what is this dummy school thanks to my daughter who graduated from class 10 and had to get into class 11 and she told me dad many of my friends have already got their admissions where in dummy schools class 10 result is not out but they already have their admissions done how dummy schools then i wanted to know what is this dummy school i understood that dummy school is a place where you just get enrolled you need not attend classes you just get enrolled into a coaching center parallelly and start preparing for the competitive exam then what happens to the school it's a dummy school anyway you need not go there you just need to go there for your practical examinations and the attendance is given and the final exam is done possibly the teachers might help i do not know and then class 11 is done and similar thing happens in class 12 so basically people are getting enrolled into dummy school is what i understood i thought this could be possibly only in this city i have never heard this anywhere in other city possibly i was not so aware 
But then I understood that I was wrong. Here is the Google Trends for this word dummy school over the past five years. The trend is growing exponentially, which means that there are many who are enrolling themselves into dummy school and getting their admission done so that they can focus on entrance examination and not really focus on 11 and 12. I was inquisitive why is this happening? So I tried to talk to some of her friends. They told any way class 12 mark is not taken anywhere. You want to get into the best engineering institution, class 12 mark is not taken. You want to get into degree colleges also, class 12 mark is not that great which is really important. Or even for medicine, class 12 mark is not needed. You want to pursue law, class 12 mark is not important. So class 12 mark is not important at all and hence the growth of dummy schools has happened. So basically people are getting into a rat race. A rat race where marks, percentage that you score, that is the branches and flowers becomes more important than the underlying concept of personal growth, character development, ethical values, understanding math, understanding science, critical questioning, understanding the subject which are the roots are ignored. And it is only the branches, leaves and flowers which are high percentage, high percentile, high cutoffs, best institutions getting into them which is actually bringing in glory. Is this the right thing to happen for this country? I think we'll have to ponder about it and think how we can possibly change. Now, if you actually look at, is the government doing something about it? Yes. Recently, the government brought in a rule telling that there is a minimum age cutoff if you want to get into coaching centers. The news came up in all national media. Why? Because there are parents who enroll their kids into coaching center as early as class 5 or class 6 aspiring that they get into the best of the institutions of this country and the rat rate starts from then now. Marks, percentage, cutthroat competition, do anything, like it or not, understand or not, just cram up, ensure you crack the exam. That is the trend that is happening and the rat rate starts early. I was surprised to see a news about one day back where a class 6 child in the city of Bangalore runs away very good academically. Why? Scared of his parents. Class 6 is into a coaching center. You can look at the national media, it gives this information. Is this the right thing to happen to this country? Again, as I say, we have to ponder and see if we can change this. So, although the government brings in rules of this kind, some say parents and the institutes will find a way around for this age bar. Uh -huh. They will find how they can go and beat around this particular rule and get things going. Okay, if that is what is the reality, let me go into the illusions of success. Here is a number which I am going to quote here, statistics as on March 2023, about a year back almost. The numbers are 61, 33, 24, 04. What are these numbers? Well, 61 suicides as per government data. It says since 2018, we have got 61 suicides in IIT, IIM, NIT students died by suicide since 2018 to 2023. Well, it is 33 if it's from IITs alone. If it's 24, it is from NITs alone. And it's going to be 4 if you take only IIMs. This is real data, right? So this being the case, let me get into more real data. 13,000 students suicide deaths in one year as per NCRB report 2023. Of these, 2,000 are preparing for their entrance examination. Why have we made this so stressful? Why is that branch flowers only are the ones which are treated as true success and not the roots? We have created this over a period of time. I and you had to be blamed for it as well. It is only the marks, percentile, percentage, even if the chap is going to be really good, honest, ethical, but he's not able to go and get that cutoff percentile, that's not okay. That's what the society has defined. So basically, just as the world depicted in the illusory, in the metaphor, students and institutions generally prioritize external markers as achievement. Someone who's got high grades, high prestigious degrees, lucrative jobs, believing to them to be the ultimate goals of education, consider that this is success. But if you look at the true purpose of education and learning is critical thinking, ability to navigate through complexities of life 
for the problems which do not have textbook answers, you should be able to solve them and be ready for it. COVID was one example along with personal development, which is all possibly overshadowed, right? Who has to be blamed for it? Let me go further. One is the bitter truth, educational institutions are to be blamed for it for sure, right? The overwhelming emphasis on jobs, placement, high package has taken over. Placement, package, profile, prospects. That's what define what great thing an MBA student is achieving. Not about critical thinking or design thinking or talking about the true learnings of management, the principles. No, that's not being really given importance. It is more about package, placements, prospects. That's what is being given importance. And more importantly, even the parents and students focus on these institutions which offer job opportunities which are lucrative. That is what is defining success. Sorry, state of affairs. But if you ask someone, oh, someone got a package of 50 lakhs, say that guy or that girl. Fantastic. That's what is defining success, unfortunately, in this country. But there might be someone who's not achieving that kind of package, but is a true, honest, hardworking chap with great ethical values, not recognized as much as the former is. Right? So the consequence is learning, creativity and innovation, entrepreneurship is all taking back seat. Again, the roots which will truly define education is taking back seats. But the ones which are defining like the branches, flowers are the ones which are taking the prime uh, you know, uh, position today. Now let us look at the corporate. What are corporates actually doing? Now if you look at corporate again, many corporations are fixated on recruiting individuals who can efficiently complete the task assigned on them, period. I got a task. I want someone who can complete this task. Can I get the talent who can complete this task? That's what I want. For that, the problem of ensuring that whom do I select? Again, branches and flowers comes in. Percentage, grades, cutoffs, and then selection process happens. They must ask, are we hiring mere task performers or individual who can drive innovation. There are very few organizations in this country who actually hire people who can innovate and who are out of the box thinkers, right? Let me give a metaphor here. I have a car, the car is ready. I need someone who can drive the car. Go to an institution, hire the drivers, put them into the car, tell start driving. They drive for their life. The car might change, but they keep driving for their life. That is the truth in this country. Let me go and change this. Am I hiring people for facing the problems that my car will face tomorrow? I am talking about mobility solutions. Can someone give me an out of the box mobility solution which can make driving a pleasure, which can change transportation in this country for the unique problems that we have in this country? Is anyone even thinking about it? Possibly very few. And hence, it is again the branches, leaves and flowers which are being given importance by the corporate. A vicious circle, the corporate gives it importance, so the parents, so the students, so their address. And the story continues. So if something has to change, it also has to change. The corporate has got a responsibility to go ahead and hire more and more people who can innovate, who can bring in solutions which are not I mean, available today for the problems that are not available today. You'll have to find uh, those people who can bring in solutions for the problems that will come in the near future. Are the corporates doing it? The answer is very few of them are doing it. And hence, it's a problem. Let me go and say the way forward for it. Everyone to blame. The corporate, the educational institutions, the parents, the students, finally, the rat race that continues in this country. Everyone talks about it, but there is very little that is being done to ensure that this rat rate changes. Let me go into the way forward. What can possibly happen for all this to change? The first one is encouraging students to pursue their true passion and interest. The government has brought out something called a national education policy. You are interested in economics, physics, history and mathematics? Take it. Fabulous tip. Because someone who is passionate to learn about economics and history and also want to learn physics was not possible before the new education policy came. Straight jacketed systems like the unsaid caste systems that were there 
you know the high percentile goers take science then comes commerce then comes arts an unsaid rule in the country if the child is taking arts oh did the person didn't get a good percentile in class 10 or percentage in class 10 is the immediate question that was coming up but the answer is different today thanks to the new education policy at that level the change has started happen some are opposing it some are in favor but i think that's a progressive step to ensure that the child who wants to learn what he or she wants to learn as the subjects today they can pick and choose those subjects and pursue their passion a first progressive step towards ensuring that this, this rat race stops second which is the tall order claim why is this rat race happening because we have a very few institutions in this country which are really good in terms of the quality infrastructure the quality learning that happens very limited since there is very limited and the demand that is there today is large and hence you know there are lakhs of students who are appearing this entrance examination with few thousand seats and hence the rat race is happening this was not the case in 1970s where the population was not as it is today and the institutions were limited but was able to give the uh, chance to those who aspire to do an education the demand supply was not skewed but today it is so the tall order claim in front of the government today is to ensure that the number of institutions in this country are large enough be it the medicine or engineering or law or any other professional degree that a student is aspiring to take should be able to take because if you are going to have that number of good institutions in this country which will give opportunities to students if that happens we will not have this rat race we will not have people going and aspiring to get coached for a specific examination for them to crack those examination the second tall order claim the third one is move from regulate to empower where a lot of regulations is being placed for education in this country they start with a doubt and not with a trust that's possibly one thing which i look at it a doubt a doubt and a doubt and the doubt continues why because i want to regulate so one accreditation followed by other accreditation followed by other accreditation followed by the documentation so majority of teachers in this country are actually spending a lot of their time in ensuring that the documentations for these accreditations are getting ready where will they go ahead and have time to ensure they kindle creativity innovation in the students why i'm busy with documentation so if everybody is busy with documentation the true learning from the teacher side also will not happen if that's not happening true learning and focusing on the roots will possibly be missed so if regulations are empowering institutions identifying good institutions and empowering them telling them go ahead create something new create the manpower that is needed in this country to make it great i think this modern education will then change for good in this country thank you so much for the opportunity given